Okay, we are recording. Welcome back to our series on severance to our, uh, I think, zero subscribers yet, other than our parents. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're trying hard. So, Valerie has um, a lot more notes than last time. So, we're going to be toggling back and forth a lot more than la uh, the last episode. Uh, we are, here we go, starting off at uh, approximately just one minute in. Oh, episode never... three. Episode three. Yeah. Really filled up, so it's nice. Quiet. Fortress of Solitude. Boop, stop. Fortress of Solitude. Obviously, anyone that's been watching TV <laughs> at all since the 80s or movies since the 80s knows that that's a reference to Superman. Yep. Clear Su Rob, uh, reference to Superman. And I actually made a reference to this, I don't know, maybe back in episode one mm -hmm. about how um, Superman is a, a Lucifer, a, a representation of Lucifer. Um, obviously, just Cal L, you know, the Elohim. He's got the S um, snake on his chest. Super. Man, right above man, and on and on and on. I could go on for hours about Superman. Uh, and what I've got here for notes also on that is Antarctica. I think I also mentioned that. Yeah. In in uh, season, uh, episode one, that is like the claimed uh, location of the Fortress of Solitude, and I actually equated. See, they're talking about. Uh, Mark's condo here. And what's his name here? PD is asking him about the neighborhood. And Mark had just said the neighborhood really never like filled out or whatever. So it's very, yeah. so very sparsely populated. Okay. Antarctica. Again, yeah. another note, another hint that this is, we're talking about Antarctica. We're talking about the area outside of where all of the activity in, in you know on the continents is is happening yeah not to mention his house it's so it's snowy right now is the theme of the show it's always snowy yeah uh, yeah so there's just so much that it's a representation of antarctica yeah and, and then of course that's where mrs selvig lives you know this is obviously so many people are saying that that's where like the fallen angels actually live and, and still mm -hmm. have like their, I don't know, like spaceships crashed or frozen in ice from many ages ago and all the, all these theories. It's all about Antarctica. Yeah. So let me stop you there because when I looked up Fortress of Solitude, yeah, it was actually called a scout ship. Mark's last name is Scout. No shit. And scout means soldier or someone that, uh, you send ahead uh, right, of right. the main force to gather info. Right. Um, and then a scout ship is also considered like a starship type of um, vessel. Okay. In, in uh, you know, Star Wars or or Star Trek. Sorry. And um, it's also sent out um, before the larger vessel to sure, it's a scout. Yeah. To seek. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was really interesting that he shares that name. And uh, I said you could see Mark as a test run vessel to Earth sent to observe or in this case be uh, observed by Mrs. Selvig oh, yep. in order to obtain information from this world, Yep. Uh, strengthen their hold on humans in this realm as well as the spiritual one. Like he's a guinea pig human. Yeah. Scout human. Mm hmm. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I mean, obviously they're portraying the lumen reality is very sparsely populated. Like they're kind of just like trying to get started with, yeah. with plugging these human entities into their system. Yep. So, yeah. To very totally. Cool. Totally. Uh, what else we got here? I, I, next I, I go to minute three. Do you have anything before that? Uh, yes. Go for it. Uh, okay. So let me go to, it's just right after this. Okay. So part's going to help with, 
You okay? I'm sorry. Yeah. With this sickness, I just, I get disoriented. It's temporary. What's Sunset Park? Okay, so main question there, what's Sunset Park? Yeah. I, um, I looked up Sunset Park, and it's actually a park in Brooklyn, uh, New York, and it's described as having a Statue of Liberty view. Um, so I thought that was interesting because the Statue of Liberty is a representation of Lucifer. Yep. And I said, looking down on the people. Yep. Um, and then I went into Statue of Liberty is uh, made out of sheets of copper. So blue blood. Um, uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's what I had on that. Oh, and I also wrote that the Statue of Liberty's torch used to be used as a navigational aid for sailors. Maritime. Which I thought was really interesting as well. Yeah. Yep. The guiding light of the uh, commerce yeah. entities. The submarine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go to three, minute three. What do I got here? Oh, yeah. I mean, this gets into actually like uh, the, the, the largest chunk of notes I've got. And it's something we have already talked about, the black goo topic. It's huge, 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 huge. I mean, we could have a weekend conference on black goo. Yeah. And then, like, do it again next year with all new stuff. <laughs> it's so much. So what do I got here? Um, yeah. They're sucking up all the black marks into a syringe. I'm not going to say anything more about that. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave some things to be inferred here. Um, you can infer what's going based, yeah, what's going on based on what we've said about the black goo. And again, another hint to go watch the Harold Couts video. And anything on, like, for example, Brighteon or Odyssey or whatever about black goo, uh, it is a thing you're not going to find anything on on certain popular video yeah, video yeah. platforms. Mm-hmm. It is something that is actively suppressed. So therefore, it is truth. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And then I've got that I should play my video for, let's see here. I've got... <laughs> Diligent. I think in the opening, like section here they play something that is relevant all you need to do is just go out and do your job and have fun and watch your basketball and stay out of the way of the adults that run the world I never bought that Nothing in this world, nothing works the way you think it does. There's always more to the story. That the reason why I'm here doing what I'm doing is because of this mutation which is go. being foisted on the human race. It's being forced on the human race. This, this video is from 2007. Change that the masters of the universe, so to speak, have in mind for the human race is being foisted on us. And I believe, again, just by opinion, that that's what I'm, that's my part in, in this uh, cosmic scheme or this cosmic play is to, is to call people back to their humanity and let them know you're being led down the garden path into something you don't know what's coming you know, I, I can't stand it when people say that that this is all high technology of the, you know of our government. No, I don't buy that. No, I think that was it. The, the most relevant thing there, and of course that was just a clip that will come uh, out of later in this uh, what is it like two almost three hour interview. This is an epic interview. I, I've listen, I listened to this way back when it came out, and many times over the years. And here is Jordan Maxwell being straight up prophetic. Uh, alluding to this 
genetic change that is being, as he said, foisted upon us. And I think it was, it's, I think he actually gets into more detail about it later on in the video about how that's a major part of like what, what his calling is, is basically to make sure we don't go down that trap. Mm -hmm. And so now when I'm looking at this and I'm noticing, okay, so, so just keep all the little nuggets in your mind. Here we go. The, the black goo being as being a thing that. I've claimed that I believe it's some way that the fallen angels like can travel through or yeah, I mean, I, I, that's a way to put it, you know, much like the symbiote in spawn traveled through the black goo, mm -hmm. came to earth, got on someone and, and took over their body. Mm -hmm. And it's and it, in the end, I mean, that's, that's an evil spirit that was in the black goo. Yeah. So just watch this. So syringe, obviously. Yep. Sucking up the little black marks, the the black goo. And there it is. Yep. And much like Spawn of Spider-Man, you got the black goo overtaking a man. And then he goes head down as that man has now become part of the collective of the Borg, uh, no more soul, no more, just, just one of the, the <laughs> enslaved, yeah. uh, no, you know, no more soul, uh, human soul operating, uh, body. And then I thought this was, I, you know, I hadn't even paused this here before. Of course, this is in every intro this, and then all those, you know, soulless NPC, uh, demon infested people all, all gather together. And it's, I, I think they're kind of represented, they're representing it as like the shadow self or like the evil self in a way that with the way they have the, the, the thing as like a shadow leaning forward and attacking. But what's interesting is it's, it's holding on to that blue card. So it's almost, so, so Mark there in the red, that's the true man. That's the true Mark. And he's got this blue thing around his collar. It's the only thing blue that's on Mark. Yeah. And the the black is re trying to grab it like because that's that's it. That's 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 it's like foot in the door. Yeah. To Mark. Yeah, I didn't catch that. He was grabbing a hold of his. He's really trying to hold bag. on to his job, to his bank account, to his presence in the commercial system. Mm -hmm. But no, this evil system wants it. You know, so it's. It's 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 attached to whatever he consented to. Yeah, in a way, it's it's it's. I mean, it is what it is. He's he's it's it's the thing that is grasping him, yep. keeping him held down. Yeah. And and as you can see, his foot is. Uh, can I even zoom in here? No. Subtitle text. <laughs> um, he, his foot is black. I mean, it, it's like it, it partially absorbing him. It's trying to absorb him, mm -hmm. and it's got him in his grasp. And I thought, hey, that's just like in the Matrix when. I probably mentioned this two episodes ago, like where where uh, Smith like jams his fingers into Neo's chest and it becomes all black and black goo starts to encase him. Yeah, that it's all connected. Oh, yeah. It's all the same thing. I've never heard anyone else talking about this, yet this is like hugely pervasive in all of recent movies and, and, and TV shows and, and everything. Yeah. Black goo is freaking everywhere in fiction. Yeah. And let's see. Uh, yeah, so I'll uh, make sure in the description of this video, you you can somehow get this Jordan Maxwell uh, interview. I'll probably just link to it. Must watch. Amazing interview. Just as uh, probably a dozen of his or more are. And on this topic, uh, I have another video here that I'm going to bring up and I have uh, in my notes just to watch the first 30 seconds or so. I'm not even going to say anything. I I'm just going to mute it. I don't want to fight so many uh, copyright battles this time around. So this is just a news segment clip I found uh, about how Japan halted a certain thing. Mm -hmm. 
and they'll, they'll give the gist of it in a second here. After contamination, now black particles found, huh. um, you know, Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's continue. Oh, I noticed that the, the company that had these black particles found in the thing is named Moderna. Notice that that is a, uh, uh, you've heard of the word modernity to refer to refer to the modern times. Okay, yeah. So, so mo the modernity Hmm. the the new age yeah. the now times like get, you know get with the times you know get your your genetic alteration wow yeah it just, it just comes up in a second here yeah japan has put a batch of their that on hold after a foreign substance Hello, like Spawn, the black goo from <laughs> yeah. outer space. Did they actually find Spawn? I, I mean, yes, they, I, I am claiming that it's going to be the same stuff. It's this black goo that carries this. Uh, it either stores the the phone. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know what. I mean, I'm just, all I know is they're connected. Yeah. It, maybe they can travel through it or maybe they're physically like stuck to it until they can touch a human and get out. I don't know. But I think that's it, yeah. And, um, yeah, and I also like it. This is the last second I'll show this. I like how they, they say uh, they found black particles while checking for foreign substances. <laughs> like, yeah, they're, they're using the correct words. Uh, so that was just that. Just too much with the whole symbolism in the opener of the show all throughout the show obviously the black goo that irving was having uh uh be revealed to him last episode it, there's just too much like if you if you would come at me and be like nah there's nothing with this black goo you're insane and then there's yeah they they, they throw they they focus on that black goo for like five different angles okay uh what else do we got here i think that's it for the the black goo stuff and next, I've got uh, 342. What do you got? Go ahead. Okay. This is not a very big thing. It's just uh, very strange. And uh, it's just one piece of the puzzle. Here we go, uh, Mrs. Selvig. Uh, I didn't notice this the first time through. This is nasty. She, she's got oh, this. I have that at seven something. But yeah, I'm. Oh, she, that's when I think she eats one of them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So here she's got this obviously like. Like a failed batch, like a burnt Some batch. Some burnt ass cookies. Burnt biscuits or cookies. What are you doing? Obvious in in on a pile of many you know dishes that are obviously dirty. Yeah. So this is just one part of the puzzle, many, one one clue of many to show that she's not a human. This is some yeah shell entity that's got just a demon. Yeah. And. They, she, she might not even think that this is weird. Yeah. Do it, do it, you know, right. Even though she, when she made Mark cookies, they weren't burnt cookies, right. like made him normal cookies, but she prefers the burnt ones. <sighs> just more black. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Just more like black symbolism. You know? Yeah. And, and when she, yeah, when I saw that, when they, when she eats it, it's completely it's like burnt. Sol it's solid yeah. black. I remember that. Yeah. So what do we got here? Yeah. And then uh, 4.30. Do you have anything before 4.30? No. Here we go. Who's they? The, he's saying who's they when, when PD has just said, like, um, they referring to, uh, well, I guess he'll say in a minute, there's someone trying to, like, to help us out. They is a group of people that know severance is a blight on mankind. I just like how he worded that. 
how severance is a blight on mankind. Again, black goose symbolism. So I have a quick Google Google images here for blight. Blight is you what you would kind of think is like a it's disease like, on plants. Yeah, basically. It's like plants black goo. <laughs> <laughs> so again, more pointing to the same of uh, everything is all about. It all comes down to this fucking black goo. They're trying to get into us. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. looks like the next thing we got is at 11.07. What do you got? Uh, I got 10.56. Yeah, go for it. I always wondered. You care in for the cookies. Okay. This is uh, it's helping me. I'm sorry, Mark. No, no, no. With red eyes. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, it skips ten seconds. When you skip. Okay. Oh, is this when she's de-icing her? Yeah. What she call it? What did she Hold even on. call it? Oh, hi. Hey. Oh, Mark, I'm sorry for the racket. I'm just de-icing my stew. Okay, who does that? Literally no one. So just like what you said earlier with her eating the burnt cookies, how she's non-human, it's just like she's alien to this realm. Yep. No one blow dries their stoop. It just doesn't make any sense. She's... It's just another example of her not being... Yeah fully human <laughs> not human at all yeah she's a a meat bag full of a, a, one or more demons yeah and as is portrayed in many fiction pieces they're just they do super strange things mm -hmm. yep I, I remember that too yeah it's just one thing of many and even all the way down to to like tiny little thing like in, in in this episode later on yeah um she throws the coffee cup. well that that's i mean that's yeah and then super strange super about strange. it but then i was going to actually say just one really tiny thing was that she she like confiscated the book mm -hmm. i'll talk more about the book later she confiscated the book and she didn't even open it she had to give it to milk chick yeah to open it so it's like she's so in cape she like can't do anything herself it's like milchik is the one that does all physical things mm -hmm. she's just the observer and the talker until she needs to throw a mug you know but <laughs> but just it the fact that sense. it's i mean obviously it's a it's a huge point of it's got to be a huge point of curiosity for her like what is this but she didn't even open it are you kidding me all she had to do is like boom there you go it's just another Strange, strange, strange. They're just portraying her as infinitely strange because she's, again, she's representing one of these watcher class fallen angels mm -hmm. who were here in the past, ancient past, and they believed they needed to, like, curate our lifestyle, teach us how to farm, teach us how to make swords, teach us how to paint faces, and all the things in Enoch that they, that it, that it says that they came to teach man. Mm -hmm. Before they arrived, we weren't banking we weren't doing uh herbalism mm -hmm. all, all these modern things yeah so it's like i think she represents one of those like observer slash curator class you know she's like trying to guide his life yeah okay what else we got here and it's funny how he doesn't really react in any sort of way either though he's like oh yeah okay that's fine if you're making noise I mean, obviously, he thinks he's, she's she's weird. Yeah. But, I mean, it's the only neighbor. <laughs> They're out yeah. in uh, Antarctica. You got to put up with your strange al alien neighbor. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, and yeah, I actually had that here, right? Um, Selvig is addicted to Mark because she's, yeah, she's one of these watchers, one of the fallen angels that are addicted to observing man for our randomness and creativity, which they lack. Hmm. I've observed that yeah. with... Because um, that's a human behavior. I've observed that in my own life with people that I won't name. I coming to the realization that they're like addicted to me 
because they get a kick out of my what I just said, the creativity and randomness. Yeah. Certain uh bosses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think they're they were like this, like no one home. Like, yeah, not a human. Not a you know, blue, team blue. Yeah. Uh right, fifteen twenty, what do we got here? Oh, that's like way into the uh yeah, I guess. What do you got between? Um, Nothing. Go ahead. Oh yeah. Okay. Do, do, do. What do we got here? Everything's blue. Oh, oh, oh. oh, this is so fun. Shall I, you know, tiptoe up and sneak to the door? He's at work, baby. It doesn't matter. What do we got here? So, you know what's going to happen here? Rickon is out there delivering... <laughs> to the side. ...his book to Mark's stoop. Uh, Selvig intercepts. His book contains great insights into reality. That could help wake Mark up. Mm-hmm. But Selvig intercepts it. Yeah. The situation is a representation of the Bible or you know, many of the other inspired scriptures. Yeah. And the fallen angels keeping it away from people to prevent mass awakening. You know, like the Dark Ages, you could you can't read the Bible. Yeah. Because there's a fragment of truth left in there even after King James hacked it up. Mm-hmm. Or even if you think of, uh, what movie was that? Eli, the book of Eli, that was in, you know, after the war of some kind and they took all the books away. Yep. They didn't want anyone to have any book of any knowledge. (laughs) And, and the evil side there, the team blue representation was that guy that was the uh, owner operator, (laughs) the head of that town. Yeah. And he knew that it just contained power. That's all he knew. Yep. Because, the, yeah, because the words, as V says, you know, relay meaning and, and you know what I mean, me, means to the truth, whatever. How yeah. I like how he worded that. Yep. So uh, I've got more to say on the on that book in a minute. Uh, let's see. 23. Do you have anything before 2350? Mm-mm. Let's go there. I think today's video will be shorter than last time. 23. Here we go. Yeah, I think I even say more about it later, like the UUR. Yeah, I do. So l- let's save that for later. What do I got? Rickon's book is red, solid red, even on the edges. Oh, is this the brother? And she y- mentions it's his fifth book, too, which I thought was kind of interesting. Who? Uh, Mrs. Selvick or really? whatever Weird. her name is. in the. And look, she says, oh, God. Okay. You're going to notice the theme of... When people are looking at this book yeah. and what they say. Hmm. So first thing she says is, oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Learn law. Rickon, his fifth book. Oh, okay. And then you'll notice uh, a better angle Chapter here. Chapter 12. On it. Yeah, there you go. You can see the, the edge. The edges are red. Oh, wow. What book in this physical reality is often That's printed that. with red? At the edge. Only Bibles. Yeah. Period. On earth today. There's no other book that is commonly printed with colored. Uh, there's like blue ones and there's red ones. Yeah. I think that's it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure there's other colors, but I've seen lots of those too. Colors. But, yeah. I've even had ones that uh, whenever Jesus is speaking um, oh, red parables. Letter, red letter red Bibles. Letter. Yeah. 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 Another indicator of that. He is Iron Man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, Iron Man. There's that's a future video, right? Uh-huh. He's got a the, the he contains the light in his in his heart and his. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's too much. Um. So yeah, again, just one more hint that Rickon was inspired to write something true mm-hmm. that can wake up man to make them able to fight. Team Blue, yeah. these fucking reptiles, mm-hmm. which are portrayed here, but they are in our Earth real life. 
on learning to be emotionally nude in front of my wife. Check it for messages, just to be safe. Which Mark. is interesting. Check it for messages. Exactly. Yeah. Yep, I didn't catch that exact. But yep. <laughs> yeah, just what we were talking about. Yeah. You just can't let the the truth of that book get to Mark. Yep. Okay. Uh, what do we got here then? Uh, uh, Rickon's book is red, solid red. Yep, yep, yep. Red versus blue. It's uh, very, yeah. And then, of course, so it's the only red thing in the office. The, the, of course, that as this whole show is, nearly everything is blue. Yep. Tint of blue, you know, gray and whites, whatever, but blue, 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 blue. Mm -hmm. And then, boom, the red stands out. Yep. Here comes Iron Man. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yep. Very noticeable in the officer. Everything else is blue. Uh, red bu red book equals from the, you know for, from and for the natural man. Red man, Iron Man, Esau. Yeah. Esau. Yeah. And then I have here. This is weird. This is fun. Discuss my my forced lucid dream. And I when I look and I looked into the mirror. So first of all, I I I got into listening to David Wilcock years and years like a long time ago in like 07 and i remember one of the topics he delved into was lucid dreaming and he said he was able to train himself to somewhat consistently cause himself to find himself in a lucid dream and i'll give you it's, it's very interesting and simple the the gist of it is is when you're going throughout your regular waking day you um anytime you go through a doorway you stop consciously and put your hand on the you know the the door the door trim you know the doorway when you're standing in the middle of the door okay. and you ask yourself am i dreaming and you actively consider <laughs> even though it's ludicrous you 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 make yourself look around and think about it Am I dreaming or is this a dream? One of those two. Okay. I did this for only like two days. Consciously forced myself to reflect upon where I am and it, it, am I dreaming? I, I probably only did it 10 times okay. for like two days. And like that second or third night, I find myself in grandma's um, kitchen bathroom. Okay. In a dream, though, holding my hand against the kitchen bathroom door. Yeah. Asking myself, am I dreaming? And I kid you not, at the end, like at the end of that sentence, it, it, when I when I first started to have that conscious thought of, this is my self check, immediately, oh. I to I said to myself, holy shit, I am. <laughs> this is a dream. <laughs> And immediately, I I had what happened to me uh, that I call the pull. I told you about this years ago, probably. I don't know. I, I, I had the pull. And that is when whatever rules exist in what we call dreamland, it's another place, it's not a thing of your mind. So I find myself in this other place. Okay, that's all I can say. And... I broke the rules by waking, like consciously yeah, waking yeah, yeah. in in a, in a in a meat in suit in a meat suit, yeah. crunching my left mind way. Okay, I woke it. I woke that way, where I'm considering things, you know, with the knowledge of good and evil, in that place, which I believe you shouldn't have. You're not you're, you're not allowed to have there. Consciousness. Consciously, consciously, whatever we know of as this consciousness that we have here. Mm -hmm. uh, so. So I found myself there, got this consciousness, knowledge of good and evil in this place. I, again, I, I believe we're not supposed to have there in this dream realm. And I had the pull. And, it, and it's a thing, it's a force that pulls you up and back. And it was strong. It was like pulsing real strong. Imagine if you like bolted a rope to your mid spine and someone just whop like that. But I. <laughs> it sounds like the Matrix unplugging you. It was freaky. Okay, and I know it was like a thing because it happened to me twice in this lucid dream. Okay, that initial pull when 
the system realized that I'm breaking the rules and I've got conscious thought here happened right away when I was in, basically, I think I was like more in the bathroom in, in, in attached to the, the kitchen in our grandma's house. And I fought it off. I hunkered down and I, you know, cr cringed and closed my eyes. I'm like, no, I'm staying. I'm staying is, is what I was thinking. And the pull went away. It was about f maybe th only three or four or five seconds of the of me fighting the pull. And it gave up. And it completely let go. And I was now free to break the rules for a few seconds in this other place. Okay. And since I was kind of half in, half out of that um, bathroom, well, I went in, I went out, walked around a little bit. Uh, and, 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 it, and Jesus only lasted like 10 seconds, maybe. Mm -hmm. I was, I was just looking around and I just remember this is another place. I am not in a dream. I'm seeing outside, see the pool, the birds, and everything was totally real. Exactly the same as it is here. Okay. Uh, except you're the only one there. Well, at least for me, I wasn't, you know, and had the pole again in, in her, in that little living room. So only like 10 feet away from this bathroom door, fought it off again. This time the pole lasted longer. And then I walked back into the, um, that, that little bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I, for some reason, I thought to myself, I want to test, I want to test out some stuff. So I, I, I looked in the mirror and I saw what, if you've seen Dragon Ball Z, where Goku goes Super Saiyan 5, I think it is, he turns into a red beast. That was me. I saw exactly that, where I was solid, really dense, kind of short, but, but dense, straight red fur. Completely different entity but it was me and like it was 100 percent me so when i'm seeing this team red versus team blue stuff oh and i struggled with that for years because i'm thinking geez am i some kind of demon in this other you know because 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 <laughs> we see that because we've been programmed with all this red is like the bad you know devil red horns yeah, and yeah and all that stuff we've been programmed to think that that's the evil the, side. the bad side yeah and now that I'm, that, that, that this was like 20 years ago this happened. Yeah. Now that I can see and think and hear, and I, 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 I actually know what's going on in the world. <laughs> now I know you just take the inversion principle, flip it. Team red is the good team. Mm -hmm. Team blue is the demon, is the devil, is, is this, is the holy sea of commerce on the blue ocean, right? Yep. Is the antichrist. Oh, and if, in case you don't know, the Antichrist is the office of the Pope. The Pope. That's it. The chief of the chief of all commerce on earth. Well, yeah, that's why the Vatican's a snake. Yeah, and we'll get there. So that's it. So just I just thought that was infinitely interesting that I've yeah. now twenty years later discovered that oh my God I'm like like the natural red. Iron Man, Red Blood, Esau, mm -hmm. uh, and I th and I think oh good and now I think oh I'm glad it wasn't blue. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so that was me. Dis yeah, okay, discussing my forced lucid dream, and so it was so freaky of an experience, and I'm all about freaky experiences, but it was so freaky that I stopped doing it. <laughs> I, 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 I haven't been sticking my hand up to a door frame and asking myself, is this a dream or, or, or am I dreaming? I think, I, I think it was, is this a dream? Yeah. That's interesting. If, so if anyone wants to do it, that, that is like a definite way to do it. Hmm. Uh, and, and I recommend go look in a mirror. Okay. So what, what do we got here, Bill? Uh, I've got next thing about is a 2805. Okay, go ahead. Oh, let's see here. 28. Yep. The power is in your camera. <laughs> what?
All eight CEOs have been of the Egan lineage. Holy cow, right there. All eight CEOs have been of the Egan lineage. Yep. Okay. Well, let's go to Revelation 17. And uh, I forgot exactly where it is. Even he is, uh, even he is the eighth. Here we go. Uh, the eight kings of the, basically the, the, the evil empire, the Holy Roman Empire, the eight kings of the ultimate kingdom oh, wow. system that is the, the, the beast, the yeah. ultimate beast, the Roman Empire. So you go go read this chapter. I all I know is that it's just interesting that there's eight kings. Yeah. And they are of a lineage. Mm-hmm. A line of, you know, they're all um I'm not saying they're all exactly like blood related, but they all sit in the same seat. They are they are all stepping in the same office. They're all they're all representing the same Antichrist. Okay. And what else have I got here? Uh, do, do, do. Just a graphic to go along with. Turn us off here. I don't, I'm not going to claim this is exactly accurate. I just thought it was interesting. I'll have this website in the description. Uh, there's, there's a lot. All I'm going to say is there's a lot to read about, about the, uh, the kings of Revelation being the popes. And how theoretically we're on the last one right now, and I believe that that, that is true. Uh, a whole lot of we're on a whole lot of lasts. Yeah. You know, the queen is about to die. Mm -hmm. This pope is like, I think it's like officially on his way out. Now. Yeah, like gonna retire. Yeah. Because of health issues. Yeah. Yeah. So we're on a whole lot of lasts at the end of this age, which is now or within the last many couple of years. Yeah, so we are now living under the reign of the eighth king, mm. the last pope. So much like in the show, they're on their eighth CEO. Yep. Just too coincidental. What else do I have in my notes here? Oh, that's where I'm at right now. And then uh, on that topic, just more about the... Vatican City being all full of symbolism with the snake. There's the snake head. Uh, this video is extremely comprehensive, so I'll be sure to put this in the description. It's just uh, on YouTube here. And also, yeah, I mean, it's it's obvious what's going on here with this um, meeting hall yeah, it building is. and also uh, the arrangement of the streets uh, and it's, it's just, it's just mind blowing. It's, it's not just this building. It, it's like multiple buildings. Yeah. So people are being devoured by the snake right there. Also, what do we got here? Right. This, I actually brought this up from, I, I found this article years ago, same topic, uh, but it just goes over more of the symbolism. And, and just as always happens, whenever you find something on the internet these days, that's actually good and true and valuable, it kind of starts to fade away. <laughs> <laughs> so this was full of pictures. And you know, what's crazy is I thought I, I, I knew this was going to happen. So I downloaded this web page and it's on one of my hard drives somewhere. Oh, okay. Like all the pictures, everything. Uh, so yeah. I, I, I'm really now tempted to go and do a, a scan of my hard drives and try to find this, like the HTML and, you know, I've got this stored. Mm -hmm. And one more thing I should note here is, uh, yes, pay reverence to the crown basilisk serpent. And I actually have in my own blog, I don't know if I have it up right now, I might not bring it up, but I'll just make a quick note that, uh, note that a basilisk has a small horn, like in Revelation talking about the beast. Mm -hmm. Notice that a basil basilisk can stand up and walk on water. 
they scatter, run, they run on, yeah. on two feet on water. So they walk on water. And so note that Antichrist, anti, you know how like there's anti-pasta anti mm -hmm. when you go to Italian places? Well, that means something that's not pasta. Correct. So it's it's something that stands in the place of so in the stead of pasta instead of pasta mm -hmm. right so the pope's official title i might be butchering this i'll paraphrase it's like vicarious fili day it means representative of the son of god on earth mm -hmm. or instead of jesus while he's you know quote gone I'm here. Yep. So he that's why he represents himself as a uh, something that can walk on water. Uh, is but he's the serpent. He's that old devil. Yeah. Yep. It's just too much here. It's mm -hmm. it's crazy. So I think that's a little deviating from our our show here, but hey, they're the ones that referenced that they're on their eighth king. Oh, I mean, CEO. Yeah. Okay. What else do we got here? I'm a little all over the place today. Um, I'm on 29.50 next. Well, I kind of touched a little bit on where they're headed in the in that uh, clip. Okay. The perpetuity wing. Sure. Uh, which means lasting forever or never ending um, wing. Oh, so right. I saw that as like the, Petual, right? um, passing from generation to generation, um, speaking of eternity in the spiritual realm, as well as like the royal family constantly passing down power and wealth. How they're always in charge. Yeah. And I think that's kind of similar to how their their CEOs are as well. Right. Mm -hmm. It'll just be one of the same. Yeah. Coming up next. So it's funny that they have a wing dedicated to almost worshiping their their CEO is yeah. the, the generations that have passed through. And, and notice that that house in there yeah. is, is like the only nice thing in mm. the whole office. Yeah. Hello, like Vatican City, right? Yeah. It's very worshipped. It's just... Especially Irving. It's actually nice. Like the rest of the place is a, a freaking hospital. Yeah. And they've got yeah, and they've got the all all that area with the nice grass. It's all off by itself. Mm -hmm. But no, but generally speaking, no one's allowed to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so what timestamps do you have? Twenty nine fifty. Okay, go ahead. Let's see if I can remember. Oh yeah, now I remember what I've got here. <laughs> so clearly, they told the cameraman. You're gonna, you know, we're we're gonna be dead center symmetrical here. It's not some accident. You know, I even lined it up. I, I think it's almost pixel perfect in huh. symmetry. <laughs> so what I so what came to my so we've got isolation here. On the left, we've got you know that crew, and on the right, they've got that crew. Yeah. And so now, continuing on with the yellow submarine uh, allegory. Okay. Where we've got one submarine that's containing a group of people that on the outside, it, it you know, it maybe just looks like all the other submarines. So here we have some symmetry where this is their crew and their reality. And then this is their crew down this hall in this reality. There's just a, a parallel reality or like a parallel world. And they're in their world, they're in their world. Yeah. They're not supposed to hang out. They're not, you know, they're like surprised these guys know each other. Yeah. And that's, and I see it kind of as like, oh, they're like somehow communicating cross realm, cross, you know, you're not supposed, you're not supposed to do that. They're treating it very strange. Yeah, they are. You're not supposed to talk to him. Yeah. Yeah, it's because these dudes are like scrying each other, like from para, from reality to re from submarine to submarine. They're not supposed to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. So that's just what I get from the visual here is. Is uh, parallel realities uh, supposed to be isolated? Um, yeah. Yep. One yellow submarine looks identical to the other on the outside. You know, just one Earth. There's another parallel Earth. Oh, there's another group of people mm -hmm. learning stuff over there. Okay. And then I've got uh, 3140. What do we get? What is this? 31. 
Oh my god. Okay, so the board is conveying pretty strongly that the severance procedure is provenly irreversible. Yeah. So I just love how she is clearly the, the other girl clearly portrayed as another one of these non-human entities. Oh, yes. Her facial expressions. Besides the smile, she's 100 percent dead. Mm -hmm. And they're both seemingly able to hear the the board through the static you know like commune with their maybe higher i just don't think that they hear anything i just think that they're i don't know yeah it's it's definitely a curious a uh, uh, mystery but uh yes. and that this knowledge should be a given for a person managing a severed floor Yes, of course. While, of course, getting MTR to their projected numbers by the quarterly deadline in three weeks. Yeah, I just love how it's portraying these. Like she's such a puppet. They're just meat bags for these demons that are controlling. Yeah. There's, there's no one home. No. And and they're just focused on, at least on the surface, on, on business stuff. Mm -hmm. So again, just another indicator that the, these... People all are running com the commercial system yep. are the lizards. Yep. Are the emotionless, no one home, no human soul uh, driving that body. Mm -hmm. No mark in the seat driving that body. There's a green, uh, sorry, there's a black goo <laughs> controlling <laughs> yeah. them. And then uh, 3220, just a few seconds away here. Thank you. Is that right? And may I ask? Goodbye, Harmony. Maybe I've got that wrong. They're seriously a two-person oh, apartment? No. Like Here they only go. ever see each other? For the most part, it's lonely, I suspect. And unnatural, perverse. O and D is nice. No, they're not, nor do they share our values. Kier sorted the departments by virtue, macro dots are clever and true, while O and D's more cruelty-centered. How many departments are there? Probably Around 30. Five. No one's quite sure. That. I th so when I hear department, I'm hearing parallel Earths. How many, how many flocks does Jesus have? Yeah. How many of, how many yellow submarines are, are in this vicinity? All generally sharing the same area of heaven and, and having the sim somewhat of a similar experience inside. And I just, I think it's awesome that, that, that no one has any idea. 500, there's, no one has, and he just flat out says, no one has any idea. Yeah. So my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, it is, it's what I said. And, and if, as we look out to the stars, who knows, maybe those are, as, as I've been theorizing, maybe those are angels, what we call angels, you know, that, or maybe somewhat, maybe those are other earth realities. I don't know. Hard to say. I just think it's interesting of, again, how they're portraying departments as isolated realms. Yeah. What do we got? 3650. Um, do you have anything between? Yeah. Let me go to, um, hold on. 34. No. Okay. Yeah, I have a... Okay, sorry, go ahead. Come now, children of my industry, and know the children of my blood. Oh, And know the of children blood. of my blood. Well, I, I didn't that catch that. Crazy. Yeah. Genesis, the seed of the serpent. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's what I've written down. Damn. Yeah. Yep. The head of commerce, mm -hmm. the CEO, the Pope, the, the 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 great dragon, the Antichrist. Yep. Going back all the way to the garden, the snake, that old serpent, the devil, mm -hmm. his seed. 
Yeah. Team Blue. Mm -hmm. Those who aren't awake to truth. Oh, and to get into the, um, like, how do you get away from Team Blue? That That's what that us versus them video covers. Yeah. Uh, that's what Jesus is all about. He came here to offer you the ability to cleanse the, 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 this seed of the serpent out of you. Yep. And then once you do that, Ooh, you're magically having miracles happen. You, you, you turn a corner left and right and, Oh, wow. I was thinking about you. Oh, wow. That's exactly what I needed. <laughs> <laughs> like you, you're connected yeah, to the spirit world, which mm -hmm can't explain it but it, it provides miracles but if you're still on team blue you're a you're blind to that yeah you're just driven by the meat suit mm -hmm. that's all you can know so when i'm explaining uh, you know these weird coincidences and stuff i'm like yeah like you can't know that unless you've let jesus you know people talk about the blood of jesus yeah. Oh, the blood, you know, they like do some big emotional thing or some ill. What it is, is that he's got the red blood. He's yeah. the, he's the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's no magic to it. You don't want to be like, oh, Jesus, give me your blood. I want to bathe in it. No, yeah. you, it's, it's just a thing you do. It's a conscious decision. I'm, I'm here. Here I am just preaching the, the actual gospel. <laughs> yeah. It's just a conscious decision. Mm -hmm. To accept that that he came here to do that. And then somehow Team Blue gets eradicated from you. Yep. And you can start acting on Team Team Red then. Yeah, and knowing truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you're able yeah. Able yeah, yeah. Feed. Jesus called the way, the truth, and the life. So I in a way like equate Jesus with the truth. If something's true. I just think it's Jesus. I, yep. I I don't see any difference. Yep. Because here here's because here's why. If you if you adhere to truth so strictly, you're gonna suffer in this life. Mm -hmm. You're gonna say fuck this place. I hate it here. Well, guess what? It's what it says in the Bible is gonna happen. So in a way, I'm equating anything that is true to Jesus, and that's why. Team Blue, anything you tell them that is actually objectively true, they either believe the opposite or hard knee jerk against it, change mm -hmm. the topic, mm -hmm. don't want to know about it. Anything that is factually true, yeah. they fight. Mm -hmm. Talking about like anything, math, <laughs> history, facts. Yeah. Biological facts. The fire is hot. No, they're they're gonna somehow fight you on that. Yeah. I'm telling you, I mean, that's Team the world Blue we live is in. fucking retarded. Yeah. And there's nothing we can do about it. Well. I mean, we can tell them about how to not be on it. But but it seems it seems like we're at the end of the age. And just as it says in the Bible, let those who are what is it? It's basically like you've joined your team. Yeah. I see us as that, as past that point where you can ch make a change. <laughs> Just like, a, I see it as like, a, you know, in gym class when the team captain, they're, they're taking turns picking teams. Okay, well, there's no one left to pick. <laughs> team Red <laughs> is over there. Yeah. Team Blue is over there. Yeah. That's how I see us at the end of this age slash beginning of Aquarius. And and guess what? It is actually panning out that way. And they didn't take the um the Georgia Guidestones down because they knew they had failed in their venture of reducing man <laughs> to 500 million. They took it down because they knew they were they succeeded. So yeah. team blue is deleting themselves well we'll see yeah anyway rant over um all right what do you got next let's see
Oh, I think I just went there. 36. 36.50? Let me see. From which I derived every human soul. Woe. Frolic. Dread. Malice. Each man's character is defined by the precise ratio that resides in him. I walked into the cave. Might have this uh, timestamp wrong. Uh, what I've got here is Lumen referred to as she. And uh, that was on the bingo sheet. Of my own mind, and That's later on. Yeah. That's later on, I think, when they show it when okay. they're in the They're in the mansion. house. Yeah. yeah, that's later on. Oh, but you did just go to the one thing I was going to bring up. Sure. The Pip. Oh, yeah. Remember the sports bar that he w went to? Uh, yeah. I think this this Egan's own, like, this whole city. They seem yep. to. They're yep. like the owners of, they subsidize the homes that Mark lives in. And apparently one of the CEOs is named after the sports bar. There you go. Or vice versa. Again, it's like the Antarctica realm, like the, yeah. the place where maybe they are primarily instead of humans. Yeah, and you, we're not allowed to go to antarctica right it's very much blocked off by right the one place that you billionaire x cannot and will never go period yeah yeah hmm. pip think of like dr pepper when i think of pip uh-huh meaning the reference to, to a demon were you gonna say anything about kier's speech right there though that you had no, gone to? no, I I don't know why I took that down. Um, um, I thought it was interesting there in his speech, though. He said he derives or obtains something from every human soul, um, which is really interesting speech for what is technically just a man on Earth. Um, why would you say that you're obtaining things from from human souls? I see that as him being not an entity from Earth. Okay. Yeah, where does that actually happen? Oh, no, it is right here. Oh, okay. 36. Oh, no, 3650. Yeah, right here. So right here on the right, Lumen referred to as she. Oh, wow. So... What that fires off in my in my mind is uh, the great horror of Babylon. Mm -hmm. And now I actually wrote up a little bit of a thing here that yeah the so that and Lumen will save the world. I have uh, these could indicate the other layer of meaning, uh, whereas I've been going on about the yellow submarine allegory is very high level. Where, where like a yellow submarine is like an earth realm. Uh, a more zoomed in allegory, like a, like, a, like a micro allegory, could be that the she equals the great whore of Babylon that rides the beast, which is the Catholic Church, the beast being the Roman Empire, which still persists to this day as the worldwide commercial system. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, and, and then... I'm I'm just saying that a lot of the lumen stuff it doesn't have to be like like upward facing to be to be meaning like the realm like the video game realm it could be also downward facing where it's like from the perspective of an earthling to looking at the isolated reality of the commercial system yeah so it goes both ways macro and micro this, yeah yeah um yep And then right here, Egan depicted with Halo. I thought that was interesting too. So again, yeah. like an angel, yeah. fa fallen angel. You know, they're they're depicted as with halos. Interesting. Oh look, you got one. Okay. What else we got here? What place here? Thirty-six fifty. Yeah, and I just have, yeah, the God of this world. 3740 here. Gives us a context. Oh, uh, yeah. Shape. 
But waking up on that table, I was shapeless. But then I learned that I work for a company. So waking up on that table, he was shapeless. I so in Genesis, we're told that we're formed from Genesis 2, 7. Go for it. I'll read it. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. So he formed us. That's why we're clay colored, by the way. Like all people are clay <laughs> yeah. colored. White white people to black people. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Right. So, yeah, the whole him waking up shapeless on the table, I definitely made me think of the inversion of the lies of this world that he needed to be shaped by his work, you know, and not what he was already. Or that the God of this world was able to shape him. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah. It may, maybe maybe through the genetic ma manipulation that Jordan Maxwell is talking about. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Yeah. Y yeah. Exactly. Trying to reform. Mm -hmm. Never creates, just monkey with yep. break. break. <sighs> so I've got, yeah, waking up in that table, shapeless so the God of the world could mold us to his liking. We have no history. Oh, yeah. And then this the history, yeah. is this. This directs you to the topic of the cyclical resets, such as 1911 slash 1912, most recently. And so this is some ho homework for the viewer. Go search for things like mud flood and Tartaria. It is one of the banned topics in our reality. So you're going to have to go to uh, non mm -hmm. popular yes. <laughs> places to find that. And then let's go to 39, unless you have something. I have 3856. Okay. Our times are actually off. So that's exactly where I. Oh, really? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, obviously. Wait, let is... it continue, though. Yeah. No. Kia. Yeah. <laughs> obvious. <laughs> obvious. That's obvious. A perfect replica. Pretty cool. <laughs> Nothing need to be said. <laughs> <laughs> Other than Antichrist. Mm -hmm. In the stead, mm -hmm. in the place of yeah. Christ is Kier. Yep. The fiery one. Coincidentally, Helios is the sun god, I think, in not Roman, but Greek. Probably Greek. I think yeah. he's uh, the sun god. I mean, the fire. Mm -hmm. so the fiery one, Helios, is talking about the same thing the god of this world. Yep. And this is the only world that they know as Innies. So in Irving's mind, yeah, and it's funny that they even know uh, the blasphemed word Jesus. Right. Because in their innies, I don't think they would know even what that is. Well, they, they brought some basic knowledge with them, and apparently that means Jesus. Yeah. I know. It is a little weird how, I mean, it's obviously a work of fiction. It's... uh. Yeah. Like but they did a pretty good job at being pretty accurate with how they talk. Yeah. So it's so, interesting. Uh coming up here, I think you actually have the same thing. Talked about this for just a few seconds. Right here in no, about five seconds. Boom. Mm -hmm. The Pope's slippers. It's a very common thing, the Pope's slippers. Here we are in the house of the Antichrist. Yeah. So here we are in the Vatican. The, you know, one of the, the wherever the Pope lives, we're in his house right now. And the, yep, there's his slippers. Yeah. And they are clearly scaled. That old serpent, the devil, the dragon. Okay. Yeah. Let's, it's just too much. They're clearly the Pope's slippers. Yep. I want to meet who made this show. Yeah. Like, what else do you know? Is this the limit of your allegorical knowledge, or do you have some real stuff that I can't decode? Mm-hmm. I want to meet them.
hey, I want to consult with you for your next gig. I'll I'll help amplify your your symbolism. Your symbolism. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, bro, if you just put this little thing back here, people will go berserk, you know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Kier equals the dragon equals the snake equals watch Conan the Barbarian. Here's more homework. The 1980s Schwarzenegger, one of his first big movies. It, it gives the whole story of man and the, versus the, the dragon, Lucifer, the snake. Um, it's the whole thing. Everything is there as well. All right, what do we got here? 4154. You got anything before? No. 41. Boom. Oh, yeah. What's well, the only red thing in the room? <laughs> Watch. Jesus. And it, and they even, ha I didn't know, I, I wasn't watching this before with the subtitles on. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know they would subtitle it as, this is Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> It's perfect. It's too much. <laughs> yes, the red man, the natural man, the line of blood, human entities that is not tainted yes. with the seed of the serpent is Jesus. Yes. Wow. And then, of course, right on the surf, right in the cover. Actually, I think this is the first time you get like a really good read at the at the cover. It says the you you are a spiritual biography of you so this is getting into the oracle with neo know thyself yeah. know who you actually are because then and only then do you have power mm -hmm. if you know that you are a blue blood has been cleansed from you and you are now hearing the creator you're freaking powerful yeah. You if you know that you can deflect lies with the armor of God for free, like you don't even have to try. You can automatically know what's right and wrong. Mm -hmm. You're super powerful. You're a superpower. Yeah. Like if these ridiculous Fortune 500 company companies led by morons knew your power they would hire you to be on the board because our insight is infinite compared to theirs. We can go, I could go into a boardroom of any fortune 500 and give them a few sentences that would make them more profit than all of their retards at that boardroom can do in 10 years. That is a hard fact because we have the ability to determine truth, to see how future events are going to play out, to know what's right and what's wrong. Mm -hmm. So we're, I, I'm just using that as an example. I mean, worldly example. We're, we're, we're infinitely powerful. And so that's why, yeah, um, <laughs> Neo was the one is just because he was seeking the most truth. Yep. He was, the he was the only one that was just portrayed as seeking truth mm -hmm. in the first part of the Matrix. You know, he, yeah. he was just obsessed. And I mean, hello, that that's all of us that have woken up over the last 20 years some years obsessed with oh this topic and then conquer that and then go to the next topic conquer that mm -hmm. that's us gaining in power thanks to jesus mm -hmm. a spiritual biography of you and i think it's interesting it says a spiritual biography because it's it's talking about the real you our our yeah our souls mm -hmm. the you you are you are a soul you are part of the creator a natural man not one of these whatever these reptilians are from they might uh, they might I'm, I'm sure they're also a creation of the same creator but somehow they went asshole and they tried to wreck everything mm -hmm. so screw them and gain your power that you can gain to be able to combat them for free yeah by reading this book this is jesus <laughs> the Bible. Is yeah. I mean, I'm not saying the Bible is the the you know is Jesus. I'm saying that it it wakes you yeah to him. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> because meaning is relayed through words. I just thought that wow, this is Jesus. Jesus. Yep. <laughs>
That's all he says. So we got uh, Selvig saying, oh, God. And then he says, Jesus. Yeah. The only words they really direct at the book. book. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Let's not get stupid. That's not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. What do we got here? So what I actually wrote, uh, yeah, the uh, again, the, the, the book is read, an indicator that the true you, the true man show, is the red-blooded, iron-based blooded man before we became intermingled with the seed of the serpent, as Genesis puts it. Jesus was the blood cleaner that came to offer us a chance to flush the evil blue blood serpent DNA out of our system. Yep. which connect us, connects us back to the creator, the spirit realm, knowing all truth mm-hmm. for free, mm-hmm. instantly, without having to think. Yeah, no, note that Melchick's in what we just said. 4230, what do we got? A few seconds from here. Oh, yeah. What I have written down here is, is, I mean, obviously this whole red and blue, Mm -hmm. the whole thing goes hardcore saturated red and blue. Like, hello, like police siren. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, like red is clashing with blue. Mm -hmm. So let's flash it. Red, blue, red, blue, red, battle. Battle between the evil fucking serpent DNA people and Iron Man. Yep. Um, notice that Helly turns to something red to break her out of the blue prison. So she grabs the oh, one, the one that. red thing yeah. to try to evacuate Satan's empire. Yeah. There's two red things in the entire building. The, this and, and, the, lights. and the book. Oh, yeah, and then when they and, the lights, and then yeah. when they go yeah. alarm, yeah, like warning, like red-blooded man doing something unexpected. Yeah, we didn't, we couldn't have predicted this with our lizard brain. Ellie? I was gonna say, even exerting free will. That is, yeah, that is our randomness yeah. we're talking about. Yeah. They yeah, hate, I just they wanted hate to... that. Yeah, exactly. I, I even was listening to, um, or it was like that movie, uh, it's like a documentary, what was it called, uh, Glitch in the Matrix? Mm-hmm. I think I've watched, I think you've seen it. I think one thing they mentioned in there is like the system can't handle us doing random things. Yeah. So, and, and what I take that to mean is, you know, the, the God of this world can't handle it, the, mm-hmm. the, his system. So like, I, I sometimes like, you know, if I'm walking down the street, I'll just like, stop. The system wasn't expecting that. I'm actually thinking consciously, mm-hmm. I want to so screw with the system, break their plans. Maybe yeah. they were watching me walk down. The, I'm just crazy theoretically. You know, maybe they're watching me walk down the sidewalk and they like plan some devastating car crash like two blocks ahead for me to be timed when i get there so all i'm saying is i like to screw with this <laughs> i like to ran yeah. i like to randomly do stupid thing not like stupid things but just unexpected things yeah so so I'll, I'll like go to a random coffee shop i'll go to a random whatever it's exerting your free will exactly yeah i just love that we can do that that we can be so random yeah and i feel like you can only do that in Christ, outside of their system. I can't know any other way, but I suspect that that is true. Yeah. And that's why we've got the whole NPC meme. And of course, an NPC is a 100% programmed entity. Mm -hmm. You can predict what they're going to do. That's why they want everyone to be a computer, that they can predict and mold. Yeah. Yeah, just more insight. To take everyone's free will away. More direct the 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 lemmings down the path they want the mm-hmm. the path of most profit for, for someone else i'm trying to think of this uh series that i watched uh it was based on this that they built a supercomputer 
um, inside this company. The way they go to the future. Yeah. Something like time travelers of, uh, uh, uh I can't remember the tight, the title. No, I don't think it's that. Oh, okay. Um, but the people that designed it are able to foreshadow inside of a big TV screen what's going to happen in the future. They're able to go to it and visualize, visually see it, not physically go to it. But they can, the computer can show them um, the future. And it's because they say in there that everything's predestined to happen. So it just has to happen that way. Yep. But then this one girl comes along and they even tell her that she's going to do a certain thing. And she does the opposite. She tries to not do what they say she's going to do. And they just think, oh, my goodness. Yep. We can't even fathom yep. anyone being able to do that. They looked at her like she was like a god. Yep. So I thought that was really interesting. Yep. Because Man. having free will, it gives us power. I am realizing now that... Unless you're what a Christian would call saved, mm -hmm. I think you actually maybe don't have free will. I yeah. think you're just going along as an NPC, and f you may appear to have free will because you're, you know, we can't see the the gears grinding in mm -hmm. your head, mm -hmm. and and that's why again I like this the guy Matt at Quantum of Conscience. He, he's he's constantly talking about the script, how they're just running scripts. And I'm a programmer, so to me that means, oh yeah, that there's no deviation. <laughs> They're just gonna bop, 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 just just a set of rules that someone has written. Yeah. And they're just gonna run it. Da, 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 da. And that's why, I mean, it it gets into the, all the same stuff. I just love being so random and, un, and unexpected, and then and then oftentimes watching the reaction of these liz of these blood blue <laughs> lizard people. Yeah. They're just they what's they glitch out. Uh, you know, if you hit someone with the um, talking about the Mandela effect, they I've seen people disappear like they glitch. They're gone. No one home at all. Glitch out. And of course, many people have said the same thing. Yeah. You try to talk to their, you know, your 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 blue blood unsaved relatives. Right. About any interesting. time, They're just going to change the topic. They don't want to. The, the the script will detect danger and it'll deflect them down that path of the script. Yeah. And oftentimes it's it's a topic change. Yeah. Or a knee jerk, you're crazy, go away. You know, just don't mm -hmm. attack. Just the stupid attack. Yeah. That has no basis, no no logic. Yeah. Uh, what what I have written for this? Yeah. So Helly turns to something red. To break her out of this blue prison, this world. The fire extinguisher. Hmm. Quench the fire of the fiery forceful one? Egan? Yeah. The fire extinguisher. Yeah. Damn. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Nothing but red and blue, red alert. Yeah, the red side of her is taking over. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. she can't she's 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 coming to Jesus. Or You'll find out actually what she represents in the future. Yeah. <laughs> There's a reason that she can't shed the red. Yeah. There's a reason why they can't get her to um, settle in. I yeah. Think, as, she uh, can't conform. She, no. She just cannot. She will not. It's impossible. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 4352. You have anything? No. No, you're good. Oh, yeah. This is good. So for a while, I was thinking, oh, this represents something. What is this? What is this? You know, it's because it's very specific. Like someone said, let's craft a hallway that's like three feet wide. Yeah. Cr very strange. And it's dark. And nothing but doors. So th there it is. It's the width of a door. So what is the width of a door? Let me show you. Actually, let me see if, yeah, yeah, I mean. So to get to the break room, you have to descend down a dark, narrow passage, okay? This screams Great Pyramid to me. Hmm. And let me bring this up. 
So this is a again a huge topic where you could put a two years of your life into. In short, the Great Pyramid is as this website uh, states. I believe that it is the Bible in stone, and all the way down to here. So if if you go, I believe down the dark path in this reality. Mm -hmm. I believe this uh, this passage mm -hmm. represents the descending passage down into the pit, the chamber of the ordeal. Huh. Okay. So if you if you start if you don't go up the passage to you know enlightenment truth. Mm -hmm. you're going to go down and uh notice that I, th I think it's cool that there's this there's this like late in the game option to change your mind before you get to the pit to go back up huh. it's just an analogy for the whole like your life here and and you have one you you have a you you can at any time as i think is what this represents is at any time you can change your mind and, and go back up yeah to the truth to the light yeah. up ascend mm -hmm. to the well in this case the, the king's chamber which has a representation of jesus's uh bodily ascension where the tomb is empty mm. um so let this play a second she's descending down into the pit and just wait till you see this There's another reason I've got this theory. I'm truly sorry to see you here, Heli. Try, truly sorry to see you here. It's almost as if it's, it, it, if it's like another place. Yeah, so I am saying that this is the pit, but that's not it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, we'll Mark skip past this one a bit. Happy. I know Mark's been trying to get you to feel happy. This is... You can't not keep... Not right now, Heli. Sit. Watch this. Please. Watch where she sits. Red hair blasting. Watch this. It's not about red hair, but. Hands on the table, please. It might be hard to see. But she is sitting at the base of a pyramid. She is. I didn't catch that. She is in the pit right now. Uh. In a chamber of, in, in a great ordeal. The yeah. chamber of the ordeal. She's reached rock bottom. Mm -hmm. You ever hear, you ever ponder what that, where that phrase comes from? Rock bottom. That's the pit. You, there's no lower. Uh, no. There's no lower point in a life th than the pit, the rock bottom. Mm -hmm. you're, you're in the pit. So that's where she is right now. That's why, in case you can't see it with a dark display, she, here is the edge of the left side of the pyramid. Here's the edge of the right side of the pyramid. Okay. Wow. It can't get any more obvious than that. Again, I, I love whoever crafted this and show. And make sure that there's no cornerstone piece on it either. Wow, I didn't even catch that. Yeah. It is the capless Great Pyramid. Yeah. Lacking the stone that the builders rejected. Yep. As it stands today in this world where the builders have rejected the stone in the in the past. And we're dealing with the repercussions to this day. So fuck those builders that rejected <laughs> Jesus back then. Uh -huh. We would be living in the golden age right now if that capstone was allowed to go on metaphorically or, or physically. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, I think that's like the, this is the crowning achievement of allegory in the show I, for this episode for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. <clears throat> yeah. So again, what is that? The third or fourth piece of major homework. You're going to watch me and Val and we're going to really really actually guide you 
to more advanced and more advanced truth. Mm -hmm. Only because we're trying to do that ourselves. Correct. Okay, what have we got here? Yep. Oh, yeah. And then 4908. When... Do you have anything between here? Mm -mm. So this is Mark discovering the original, as Petey put it, map of the office. Mm -hmm. Oops. And just another note that the break room is here and it is solid black down in the pit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And another thing to notice here is this says, I don't know if you can see this. Uh, I don't know if I can zoom in so easily in here, but it says coil of doom. And what do we know that coils and then has a triangular shaped head. <laughs> so just more snake. Yeah. More snake symbolism. Wow. Oh, and notice where the snake is coming out of. Perpetuity wing. Uh-huh. Yep. It's too much. It's too obvious. Who did all this? Oh, right. Like, I want to talk to you on the phone. Contact me. I, I won't think you're evil. This is amazing stuff. This is amazing. The coil of doom. The this, this snake coming out of the Vatican. Mm -hmm. Holy shit. It's too much. I, and that, that's that's really the only, all I've got here. It's This this map is just generally strange. Um, you know, some people might live here. I, I don't know. You know, there's there's probably more to, de to, to decode here. Well, that's all I've got. Yep. You too? Yep. Okay. It's been probably a very long video. When when we do these like this, even though this is our only third one, we look at the, the time, the clock, and it's like, whoa, that was an hour or two hours, whatever. <laughs> yeah, we thought it was going to be a short one. Yeah, no. Um, okay. Uh, I Again, I should mention the Discord link. I, I put it in, in the description of the last video. I'll put it in this description uh, This description of this video. Uh, feel free to join in the Discord. Uh, I started have uh, you know curating the my research into categories there, and I'm going to continue that practice. And that's uh, I think that's all I should say right now. Um, subscribe to us because me and Valerie are trying very hard at this. We're putting many hours a day into this just so you can get some. Uh, I mean, we're, we're trying to be serious talking heads. <laughs> and so, right. and so on that red truth. And so, yeah, we'll respect your time and end the video now. Catch you next time. The, uh... the end. <laughs>